Traveling to a place you have not visited before can feel very strange. The buildings, the people, they somehow share a story you know nothing about. A story that you were no part of before, but somehow, just by going there, you enter their story. For most of them, you are just a passerby, just a tourist. But for some, you may be more, more than you will ever know. Welcome to the Book of Wednesday, a collection of original scary stories, brought to you from the Strange Universe Studio. As a travel writer, I love to travel the globe, searching for unexplored places and writing about them on my blog. I have been doing this for a few years now. Around two years ago, the website really took off and since then I have been getting a lot of requests from tourist information offices asking me to visit their town or city and write something about my stay there. Most of them just sent me an email saying, visit our beautiful city. But some actually offered to pay for my stay and reimburse me for my travel expenses. When this happens, I always get excited. I get to make money doing what I love. I am a lucky guy. A month ago was the first time. I received a request via regular mail. I came home from visiting a famous national park when I found the envelope in my mailbox. I put it out on the table with my other mail and I almost forgot about it until I was ready to go to bed. I had already dimmed all the lights in the house, but curiosity got the better of me and I decided to sit down at the kitchen table and open it. There was a small handwritten letter inside. Dear Mr. Nick Olsen, we very much enjoy your travel writings and hope we can persuade you to visit our small but humble town somewhere in the near future. Under the text stood a simple sign-off, just saying, Friendly greetings, Mr. Brown. Followed by the name of what I understood to be the town he wanted me to visit, I got out my phone and looked up the name. It turned out to be a small town in Europe, Luxembourg. I couldn't find anything special about the place. It was a very small, sleepy town. There wasn't a lot to do. I remember thinking, maybe this is why they need my help. Maybe they expect me to come up with some thing about this place that will draw a lot of tourists. I knew my blog had some visitors and I made some money off the ad revenue and places who paid me to write about them. But I was nowhere near that influential. I couldn't create something out of nothing. I looked at the envelope. There was clearly something else in there. I grabbed the envelope and turned it upside down. A stack fell out of the envelope and onto the table. In the moonlight that shined through the kitchen table window, I saw bills spreading out over the table and slowly coming to a stop. My mouth almost fell open. I sat there for a while just looking at the table. I didn't have to count the bills to know this was a lot of money. There were no pictures, no flyer, no information, just a handwritten note and the money. I tried to look up the guy who had signed the letter since I wanted to ask him what he exactly wanted in return for the money. But there was absolutely no information about him online, anywhere. I played with the thought of going there on and off for a few weeks before I finally decided to pay the town a visit. The money the mysterious Mr. Brown had sent me was more than enough to travel there and stay for a few days. I flew to Luxembourg and rented a car, since there were no buses or trains going in the direction that I was heading. The car ride led me out of the city and into a beautiful landscape. Small roads led me over glowing hills and through dark forests, before showing me the town I came for. Between three hills, covered by forest all around. The town felt like a well-kept secret, hidden away from the rest of the world for years. When I arrive at a place I know I'm going to write about, I like to stop my car at the beginning of the town and just walk around, sometimes for a few hours. I look at the buildings, people, I look at the pavement, just getting a feel for the place. If I'm there because the tourist information office asked me to come, I will walk past their building as well to see where it's located before going to my hotel. 
This time my walk through the town did not take more than 15 minutes. It just wasn't a big place. I also couldn't find the tourist information office, so I decided to walk to my hotel. The hotel stood in the center of the small town. It was called the Postal Service. The name was written in big golden letters on the red banner. When I asked the lady behind the desk who was checking me in about the name, she told me that this building actually used to be the postal service for the area. It wasn't until later, when I took a second walk around the town, that I started to get curious. Why would a small town like this need a postal office that big? But at that moment I didn't think much of it. I was tired from my journey and I couldn't wait to get to my room, unpack and get a long shower. The next day I took another walk around the town, looking for tourist attractions or little curiosities that I could mention on my blog. Nothing stood out. No shops, no statues, no museums, nothing. The whole place felt abandoned. The only people I had seen so far were an old man walking his dog and a woman from the hotel. When I reached the end of the town I turned around to head back to the hotel. Maybe the lady could tell me a bit more. At this point, even just some ordinary facts about the place would help. And just when I started to get a bit desperate, thinking this whole trip was a mistake, I noticed a small hiking trail between two houses. Since there was nothing better to do, I decided to follow it. It was a small, steep trail that led into the forest on one of the hills. I thought it would circle around the town and maybe come back down again on the other side, making for a nice hour or so walk. But the trail continued upwards and eventually rose above the forest. To my big surprise, when I came out of the forest, I was standing in front of a small castle. Most of it was the outside walls. The rest was basically just ruins. I looked around, expecting some kind of plate on the castle wall or a sign near it explaining what it was, when it was built and maybe who lived there. But there was nothing. I walked around the structure and noticed a small hole in the castle wall. I decided to take a little peek. I stuck my head through the hole and quickly looked around. I didn't see anything strange or scary, so I decided to hop through the hole in the wall and do some exploring. There was a lot of rubble on the ground. But other than that, there wasn't much there. There wasn't even a real roof anymore. The ground was just grass. There were no doors, no furniture, no real architectural signs that this used to be a castle. The only explanation I could come up with was that maybe this was never part of the actual castle. Maybe just a foundation or some storage area. For the first time since I started this trip, I started to get a little excited. I took out my phone and snapped some pictures of the structure. I decided that it would be good to get some pictures from the inside as well. I walked towards the hole I came through when I saw something sticking out from between the rubble. A small white corner of what looked to be paper. I put my phone back in my pocket and grabbed a small corner between my fingers. I slowly pulled it up from between the stones and dirt. To my surprise, it was a black and white picture of the castle. A picture from what seemed to be its glory days. In front of the entrance there was a wealthy family. A father, a mother and two daughters, all dressed in fancy clothing. Beside the family there were some workers in the photo as well, and some actual knights in full armor. To the left I could see a wooden structure that served as a stable for the horses. I am definitely not a historian, but from what I had seen in movies and stuff, this looked to be from the Middle Ages. I stared at the picture in disbelief. That couldn't possibly be true. I heard rumors about the first photo cameras being way older than originally expected. But a picture from the Middle Ages was impossible. I put the picture in my backpack and walked the trail back down the hill towards the town. For the next couple of days, I just walked around and took some pictures of the old houses, the little gardens, the only man that I had seen outside walking his dog, and my hotel. When I walked past the front desk of the hotel every morning, I expected the woman to hand me another handwritten letter, an invitation to meet Mr. Brown, but I didn't receive anything. Most of the tourist offices that I receive an invitation from 
ask me to stop by when I'm in town. When that happens, they have a little meeting set up. It's just them shaking my hand, being happy I'm there, and telling me about their beautiful city, giving me some flyers, recommend some places, stuff like that. I kind of hate those visits. But since they are paying for my stay, it's the least I can do. Mr. Brown did not request a meeting with me. Because I was determined to find at least some answers, I went downstairs after I had my breakfast on my last day and asked the lady from the hotel where I could find the tourist information office. She laughed at first, but then stopped and looked at me. Oh, you are being serious, she replied. Honey, this is a town with not even a hundred residents. We don't have a tourist information office. But, but then I stuttered, contemplating if I should finish my question. But then who is Mr. Brown? Because of her first answer, I thought it wouldn't be smart to tell her Mr. Brown was the one who invited me here. She looked at me, squinting her eyes. Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown, you mean Family Brown? They were the first family to live in that castle on the hill. They built that castle in the Middle Ages or some. I think the last family member died, let's see, around 800 years ago, maybe. I thanked her for the information, went straight back to my room and started packing. An hour later I checked out and drove off, back to the airport. Questions kept running through my mind. Why was the postal service in a small town like that so big? What happened to the family Brown? What happened to the castle? Were those people in the picture I found actually members of the Brown family who lived there in the Middle Ages? And why was I invited? If the man who lived in the castle hundreds of years ago really was Mr. Brown and he could send a letter to me, in the future, could he maybe also take a picture, way back then in the past? You could say I found a lot of questions, but I did not find a single answer in that town. When I got home, I left it alone for a few days. I just had to clear my head. After a week or three, I did publish an article about the place, talking about the beautiful nature, talking about how there is almost no one in the town. Talking about, if you ever find yourself stuck there, stay at the postal office hotel. Talking about the lady from the hotel. Talking about how she's really nice and will take care of you. And also, talking about the hiking trail that leads to the castle on the hill. I ended the article with the old picture I found. So everyone can see the castle in its glory days. Everyone can see the proud family staring into the lens of the camera that took the impossible picture. I hope to one day find out a little more about the mystery. And I know that writing an article about a place so strange and fascinating is not much. I know, but at least in some way, I did what was asked of me. I did my job. I just hope it was enough. I hope I made Mr. Brown happy. Hello there and thank you for listening to The Book of Wednesday. If you like more scary stories, please consider subscribing to the channel. For now, we close The Book of Wednesday. Thank you for listening and I'll speak to you soon.